Hi, this is Glenn Lowry. I want you guys to know that The Glenn Show is moving to its own YouTube channel. If you don't want to miss new episodes, then I'd encourage you, please follow the link in the description and subscribe to The Glenn Show at the new YouTube channel. You can also help us out and help the channel grow by commenting uh, and by hitting the like button, you know, the YouTube algorithm. So that's the announcement. Stay tuned. There's much more to come. Thanks. So just following up on that, I mean, are you are you an optimist or a pessimist about what we can expect in the next few decades? Because it seems like at least, you know, there are fads and fashions that sort of can change quite rapidly. But it seems now that the kind of approach you're articulating is certainly not the most popular one among the loudest voices. Rather, it's the so-called anti-racism movement, emphasis on structural racism and so forth, seems to have the ear of many people today. So what, what do you anticipate as the prospects for improvement in the coming decades? I'm a pessimist. Um, I'd like to be wrong about this. Um, I think my side, quote unquote, is losing uh, the battle. I think it's a rear guard action uh, that you see, let's say, in the K through 12 schools against so-called critical race theory. I mean, I think there are excesses on the right in terms of creating this demon called critical race theory, which people don't even know exactly what it is and what their opposing agents have a sense that kids are being uh, wrongly educated around racial issues. But uh, and, and I do think that kids are being wrongly educated around racial issues, although it's not a grand conspiracy to, you know, to turn kids against their own country or something. You can overplay. I would not, you know, try to legislate uh, what kids are taught in schools. I think that's a local affair, school committees and so forth and so on. But I'm a pessimist. I think the um, uh, the I'm a pessimist not only about the questions of uh, the condition of African American society, but but about the well being of our country more broadly. Um, I think the the narrative of black victimization has just taken on a life of its own. Uh, I heard a sitting member of Congress say, with respect to the um, migrants crossing the Mexican border into Texas, who were congregating at the Del Rio, and so forth, mostly Haitian. Uh, th there was a big brouhaha, as you know, about the border patrol people and their horses and the reins of the horses and so on. The member, sitting member of Congress compared that situation to slavery. And I thought, my God, uh, I thought this trope, this, this, this uh, act, this performance, Black people are hated by America. America's institutions are fundamentally corrupt and they're fundamentally racist. Has gotten to the point that the experience of African-American slavery 150 years ago is being appropriated on behalf of, what, open borders for Haitians to walk across? Maybe you want them to walk across. We could debate that, but it's not slavery. And yet, so comfortable are advocates in this kind of language and so intimidated our people. As soon as that kind of message got out, the Biden administration bent over backwards to prove that, well, no, no, we're not doing that, we're, you know. And my, my, the point I'm trying to make here is not about the specific issue of uh, border uh, uh, issues. It's that the rhetoric of victimization is so powerful and it's so seductive and it's become so legitimate that people just use it reflexively and I don't, I don't know how to, how to uh, get out of that box. So I'm, I'm, I'm pessimistic about a movement. They call it Black Lives Matter. Black lives do matter. I agree. Now, if you've got eight or nine thousand homicides a year in which black people are being murdered, and you've got a handful of cases in which police officers behave inappropriately and extirpate black life, that's bad. Those police officers should be confronted. But how could you possibly be fostering the integrity of black life while having absolutely nothing to say to your community 
about the behavior of people in your community who are extirpating Black life. Um, I mean, condemning them relentlessly. I mean, calling them what they actually are. Uh, I don't mean making excuses for them, and I don't mean looking the other way, and I don't mean waving it and saying there's nothing to see here. Now, okay, I am the conservative-oriented guy that I am, so, you know, dismiss me if you will. But the situation, the, the intellectual and political failure reflected in the situation is what causes me to be relatively pessimistic about this. All of the organs of cultural power and the New York Times and the Washington Post and the MacArthur Foundation in Hollywood and uh, so on, in the universities, all of the diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, mobilization, uh, it seems to me, ignores the points that I was trying to call our attention to in my remarks about the development narrative. And so for that reason, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel that I'm kind of, you know, tilting at windmills a little bit, but I feel like I have to go ahead and say it, call it the way that I see it and do the best I can. So just 